Hello all, you are on the Andreas Crypto News channel. In this video the topic of XRP will be touched and very important. That's why we don't close and watch till the end. Do not play with fate. $5 for a dream cryptocurrency? Would you like it? Get into the fray. Sign up and like it in advance. XRP Price Forecast, a recent review. In the cryptocurrency world, XRP is a different story. It's decentralized, but not as decentralized as Bitcoin, Ethereum and the like. Unlike them, Inflation, Cain said it many years ago that it, it's, it's an invisible tax that only one man in a million really understands. And it's a tax on people that have had faith in their currency uh, that the government's issued. It's, it's interesting, in the United States, uh, what, what uh, the, the value of the dollar since I was born has declined by 94% to six cents. Uh, so inflation, uh, appropriate for, uh, for XRP. There's a lawsuit hanging over Ripple right now. A group of uh, people are saying that XRP and Ripple are sort of tied together and that they, you know, XRP could consider it an unregistered security. Um, what would you say to them? Well, it, it's pending litigation, so I'll probably be a little bit, uh, you know, muted on the topic. Uh, suffice it to say, you know, we don't think it has merit. Uh, you know, these are people who didn't buy XRP from us. Uh, you know, we also don't believe XRP is a security. Uh, I think, you know, one of the poignant arguments in my point of view is, you know, if I went back to the office and said to the team at Ripple, hey, we're shutting down, XRP trades on 130, 140 exchanges around the world. XRP would keep trading. So you're like, wait a minute. Okay, so if it's a security, it's a security of what? Uh, it's not a security of Ripple. You know, it, it doesn't give you the rights to dividends or ownership of Ripple, the company. We, we have shareholders of Ripple, right? We raised a Series A financing, a Series B financing, uh, and we own a lot of XRP, but they're, they're two separate things. At the same time, uh, we've seen recently Block One uh, had the hammer come down on them from regulators. They uh, were uh, basically said that they were selling an unregistered security. Um, $24 million. Just it's interesting you call that a hammer. They raised $4 billion and they... <laughs> yeah, it's a light hammer. hammer. It's a light hammer. hammer. <laughs> Maybe it's a fly a hammer. <laughs> um, uh, Either way, so what's the difference between Block One and their token EOS uh, versus you know what you guys are working on? Well, I think one really important distinction is the XRP ledger existed before Ripple, the company. You can, you know, it's a public blockchain. You can go back and see kind of transactions zero, one, two, three. You can see when Ripple was incorporated in the Secretary of State in California. Uh, Ripple didn't create the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger had utility prior to Ripple's existence. Uh, you know, certainly we are an interested party in the success of the XRP ledger, for sure. We own a lot of XRP. Uh, but it's a little bit like saying, you know, Exxon owns a lot of oil. That doesn't make oil a security. <laughs> Exxon's clearly interested in how to, you know, we can argue about the health of the, you know, I'm not here to debate carbon emissions. <laughs> <or> this, <laughs> you want to get into that? Yeah, Maybe this isn't the example I wanted to choose here, but <laughs> suffice it to say, Exxon cares a lot because they have a lot of that they're relatively unfamiliar with or, or new, uh, and, and it's just an interesting activity, uh, being a financial regulator and, and, and sitting in your, in your chair. So, I mean, when you think about the, the technology and, and the challenges that poses, how do you go about the business of identifying and keeping your eye out for the risks, again, not just in the, or associated with the, with the product, but with the technology itself as it becomes either commoditized or infiltrates the traditional um, financial marketplace. Well, I, you know, again, we're for innovation. So really in, in, in more mature areas like use of the cloud or artificial intelligence, there continues to be challenges of how regulators look at those things. You know, does the cloud represent a higher degree of cyber risk? Uh, you know, is, is uh, artificial intelligence uh, if, if you use it, do you uh, perhaps violate concepts of fair lending or disparate impact that are concepts the CFPB has? So all these are questions that really need to be solved. So I consider that kind of the, the crypto is kind of the new, new thing. The core fintech are, are sort of established processes that have gotten to some stage of maturity but still need uh, increased level of maturity for regulation. So that's why in that report, we kind of separated the two. One, we weren't finished with the digital asset work, so we 
weren't ready to publish on it. And two, uh, those reports were Treasury recommendations. They weren't interagency, so we did sort of make an effort of triangulating with other uh, regulators, but they were really our thoughts. We had the pen. So that's, you know, so really the uh, uh, excluding digital assets from that report is just a matter of, you know, if that report was a year from now, you know, it would have been integrated. But I do think it's important to look at the nature of FinTech, and, and these are fairly traditional, uh, uh, addressing fairly traditional financial services needs. It's sort of, a, 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 in some ways, a disruptive marketing technique. It can be a disruptive credit analysis technique. Uh, speed to market innovation can be quicker, but it's largely sort of overlapping with what we would all consider traditional financial services. Crypto, digital, blockchain technology is like a whole nother step. So I guess the first thing is to get the first phase right, and I think we put out a framework that we're moving forward on. I think on this. Refer to this as the Aaron of the crypto space. This has been picked up by Forbes. I have to ask you, Tone, what has been going on? I know, I wish Forbes would have reached out uh, for an official comment, but uh, yeah, Forbes did pick it up. It was a little bit more of a joke, but uh, I mean, but that's what happened. That's what happened in Enron. I mean, Enron was pretty much cooking the books and they had, uh, they had a fake instrument. They were selling these, uh, uh, I guess, contracts on uh, energy, but there was nothing there. It was all just smoke and mirrors. And that's how I see the Ripple token, and I've always explained it that way. There's absolutely no reason for this token to exist. Uh, there's no reason to add a very volatile currency, and Ripple is insanely volatile. Ripple just dropped 20% in a single day the other day when it fell from 30 cents down to 26 cents. Uh, I mean, uh, these things are insanely volatile, and there's no reason for them to exist. And, uh, and they keep making up reasons for it to exist. Now, there is a lawsuit going on right now, claiming them to be a security, but that lawsuit is not coming on behalf of the SEC. Uh, that lawsuit is coming on behalf of an individual. So it's not exact. I, I don't really know what's gonna happen there. We do cover it on the Bitcoin Law Review. And uh, yeah, I know one of the lawyers didn't like the fact that I call everything a scam, but I would have given Forbes a more official comment. Uh, but yeah, the Ripple token is a really, really sad situation where it was created back in 2012 or so uh, just to make money, basically. And now the company has spent the last six years trying to disassociate itself from this token while at the same time trying to find make up any reason for it to exist. On a final note, Tone, I do want to ask you. A, so three to five years is tricky. If you'd said 30 years, I think I'd give you a more accurate uh, vision. I think three to five years has a lot of dependencies on, does our economy reopen in the next six months? What happens with the presidential election? What happens with China on various uh, immediate issues of, of national sure. security? So, what, but what I would say is if you kind of assume a steady state on all of those